I'm Villas V, and this is The News. Alright y'all, let's get on into this. So, Warframe recently had a dev stream, 173, they're talking about the Abyss of Dagoth, or Dagoth. They really don't know exactly what they want to call her. I guess we'll find out on October the 18th. But you didn't come here to find a release date. You came here for the news. So here it is. All right, we're going to try to make this go by as quick as possible because this was two hours in the making. So we're going to try to cut that down to less than half. So the next Warframe is going to be Dagoth, or Dagoth, I don't know. We'll figure out once Grandmother says the actual pronunciation. Honestly, I would rather call her Dulahana, but hey, it's Dagoth, because it's totally not anywhere near Sevagoth whatsoever. So the next Warframe is, as you can see, uh, she is going to be coming out with the uh, uh, Nabarus event that is going to be coming out. Uh, you can get all that good stuff from Daughter. So one of the things I also want to say about the Knights of Nabarus thing, they are going to have additional uh, sigils. And as you can see, these ones, the ones I really want to get, I mean, I, I do like the Baths one, the Death Cube, and the, I forget what, I'm, I forget what that's called. But you got the Owl, the Necros one. I definitely want to get this one. This one's my jam. Anaros, I love that. That's adorable. That's probably another one I'm going to get. But this one right here, oh my goodness. This one I will, in, the first one I will get, then these two. But this one, love the, this. This makes me go, damn space mama. Whoo, bro. Mm -mm -mm. Love this. But one of the things they are going to have, and spoiler alert, let me mm, show you. So one of the other things they are going to have is a Nabarus Lotus. And this, I don't really care for. A lot of people did like it. Honestly, the witch hat one. They should have just two of them. Uh, but eh, some people like the uh, Nabarus Vampire Lotus. But I, the witchy one, I would actually prefer more than anything. Degoth will be coming out with an alternate helmet, which looks like this. Now, look at that. That is one hell of a nice skin. Honestly, the helmet, oh my god, I love this helmet perfectly. Uh, it, honestly, it gives that bit of a gothic feeling to uh, Degoth. Uh, I absolutely will be getting this when I get her. But overall, I have to say the aesthetic for Degoth, as is right now, is actually really nice. I found it hilarious that they said that they had to keep the uh, thick thighs. Hello there. <laughs> uh, absolutely beautiful. Now, going on to her abilities, I have to say some of her abilities. The first one, I didn't care too much about, but it's a quick AoE. The second one, I like the idea of being able to actually uh, put a status on people. I feel like she's kind of a cross between Sevagoth and Kalervo, but honestly, this is, a, this is going to be a very interesting frame to have, and the... Ability to even come back from being killed is a very good survivability even having a dual purpose for straight up uh, If you don't die and if you do die uh, Even the meter is kind of interesting to have uh, What's even better is it comes with a cooldown and I'm hoping a duration or efficiency will actually lower that duration Though 20 seconds doesn't seem half bad. More than likely, I'm probably going to be helmeting one out just because. And now we're going to go on to how you get this lovely lady. Uh, you actually have to go and get the syndicates. You will have to get this abyssal beacon. It's 5,000 standing. So if you are currently trying to be prepared for her... I would just make sure you have a good maxed out standing in whichever uh, syndicate you are currently a part of. Now, these Abyssal Keys are like the former Void Keys, which you actually had to uh, do the mission corresponding to that particular one. So, 
I like that they brought this feature back and I'll even uh, show you how they look like. So as you can see right here on series, they have the abyssal beacon and it's an exterminate mission. I don't know if it's just, ex ex I don't know if it's just exclusively exterminate, but you need to do these not to get things for her, but to get the vein thorn resource from these so that you can go in your dojo and make the room. Now here's a quick glance at the room itself. As you can see that uh, they're just about to walk in and look at that. I love just walking in and it, it, it's really gothic horror. I mean, this looks creepy as hell. You even got the, the horse and you can, this is where you can actually customize your cave uh, without having to go into Daviri, which I thought was very interesting. What was even cooler is, yeah, the uh, idol am animation actually, you can summon her cave. But you can go all the way over to here, and you can even see that once you activate the altar, that all of this, as you can see right now, all of that, you will just automatically be researched. So you will not have to research each and every individual one. As soon as you put in the room, it's automatically researched. And then a little area right next to the thing, you're able to listen to her tale from grandmother. So that is the De the Degoth stuff. They then decided to uh, start going over all the Void skins. So the new Void skins are Nidus, which eh, I don't really care for. It looks kind of nice. It's just not my cup of tea. You also have Mirage, and I mean, she doesn't look that bad. I really don't care much for this particular one. And then they also have a Void skin for Protea. And this one I might actually get just because it does look a little bit better. I wish there was some extra lighting on her, but I mean, this is, this doesn't look half bad. Now the next thing that they're going to be going over is the companion rework. No longer will all your companions just straight up die in the middle of a mission. So if you decide to do, I don't know, uh, an Eidolon run halfway through, not even halfway, but after the first Eidolon, your Helio straight up dies. That's no longer the case. There will be mods corresponding to revitalizing your companions. And I think this is very good. I like the ability to do this stuff. And I like how they're actually giving particular mods to your companion. The Sentinels is... Just I love absolutely love it. And even going right over to here, you can see some of the some of these ones are even better. Like duplex, uh, yeah, duplex bond companions will clone itself each time you expand 100 energy. Clones live 30 seconds, and their kills have a 50% chance of dropping energy orbs. This right here makes it so that if you do have a very inefficient build. There's a 50% chance when they kill something of dropping an energy orb. Honestly, that's actually really good, but these things don't really damage too much. So hopefully they will be bringing back their damages as well or increasing them. Headshots to reduce the recovery time for your companions. They even get uh, criticals and stuff. That's nice. Uh, reinforced bond if the companion exceeds... 1,200 max shields or over shields, then your fire rate is increased by 60%, reloading restores that shields to your companion. I mean, that would be really nice, but burning through, uh, burning through ammo just to give it over shields, eh, that, this is debatable, but I do like the idea of it. And then aerial bond, airborne kills decrease companion recovery time by three seconds and nine seconds for headshot kills. So if you do have, oh, if you do get a headshot, yeah, it has to be a, uh, air, 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 a headshot, but airborne. Eh, I mean, it's nice. I don't really do a whole lot of airborne stuff, but yeah, that is what it is. 
Uh, they did talk about how that the animal companions are actually going to be getting an increase to all of their stats. So you can see the original without any mods, uh, it would be at 75 health. Now that it's going to be uh, increased to uh, 25. With mods, it's going to be even more. So I think this is definitely going to give them a heap and hell of a lot of health and armor and shields. What I think is going to be funnier is when you slap that on with Anaros and just watch their health explode. But again, that's just me. And now for the moment everyone's really been waiting for, yes, we're going to go over the Hydroid rework. And oh my goodness, this one has been needed so much. I did have a video of what I think they would do if they weren't going to give him a new ability, but they did give him a new ability. So Undertow has officially been replaced. The first, All of the abilities will actually do corrosive damage. And so I think his new ability plus all of his current abilities are going to make Hydroid a tank, a, a casting crowd control tank. I don't know how they did this, but I love it. I'm still going to remove his tidal wave or tidal surge, but the, the ability to actually steer it and apply corrosive is still nice. But it is what it is, unless there might be something I change out. Other than that, oh, whoa, whoa, back up, back up, back up. Plunder, the, our armor plunder, it applies corrosive and strips are, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I did not see that. I did not know about that. Yeah, no, Um, straight up, <laughs> Hydroid just went from wimpy, wimpy, wimpy to, oh my god, this might be the new meta. So all you Hydroid... Uh, fanatics out there the cult of the uh, the cult of the tentacle has been revamped the king is coming home boys the king is coming home but yes i will definitely be making builds with this the best thing about this whole thing has to be what they did to tempest barrage it no longer does impact damage the gods have smiled down upon us peasants and they have re they have given us Quite literally, one of the best now abilities you could probably put in a crowd control sense. So now it staggers and puts on corrosive damage. This is good because it doesn't get hit with impact anymore. Now they don't bounce around and ragdoll. They just get staggered. And that's beautiful and that is perfect. And on top of that, his new passive is pretty much the more stacks of corrosive you put on everything the more armor and status you will be getting. And that also works off of Plunder as well. So Plunder is going to be the absolutely new ability you want to keep on him. Uh, they even went over, and I'll show you because I thought this was really interesting. So they actually changed his fourth ability so it's not th waggling and thrashing enemies all over the place. Instead now, it'll just hold an enemy. And if we can, uh, here we go. Look at that. That is beautiful. I love this. It just holds them there for you to shoot at your earliest convenience. And every time you slap on anything with corrosive, because everything does corrosive, they even get marked with that. Look at that. That's just, just straight up beautiful. You can even see over here on the side, you can get that increased armor and corrosive damage. So they went from... <laughs> The King of the Sea went from probably one of the lamest ever Warframes to the saltiest of Warframes, and I love it. This is just absolutely mwah, chef's kiss. Pablo, you are a god when it comes to this. Now, if you can do one thing, please make an Aros great again. For the love of God, man. All right, we're going to keep on this gravy train and go to the next thing. So the new player experience, they're, one of the things I want to say is they are removing flawed mods. They're gone. Don't worry about them. They're, they're, I don't know what they're going to give you for them. Hopefully, Cemento, if you have any, but most likely no. So also, the Vorus Prize no longer gives any of the MK1 weapons, but you will be able to keep the MK1 weapons. They aren't getting rid of those. They're just making the Vorus Prize quest 
just not give them. Which I think is kind of silly. Honestly, they should just get rid of the MK1 weapons. Or whatever MK1 weapons you get during your, the start of your game is quite literally the only ones you get. Uh, but, again, it is what it is. They're going to be uh, changing some inbox... In, in the early game inbox stuff and junctions. Apparently, people would... Or, 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 the new players into Warframe would go into some of these junction missions and straight up get just their butts handed to them. And it's a single player mission. I mean, you're only killing one thing, but they were having some issues. Uh, un a universal enemy radar. That's going to be interesting because now they're going to have to give F Ivara a new ability. Or not a boot ability. A new passive and they will have to change some of the mods as well, so I cannot wait to see how they do that. I don't think they actually went in and showed, but I hope so. Now, uh, the quest improvements, the Wave Rider one, that one got my jimmies in a bundle because you would get. I got to the la very last one, and I have to do that a uh, thousand points or one hundred thousand points on uh, that combo whatever it's called and that's even hard to do as is so they're going to be changing some of the particular uh quest lines even the natal one uh, a lot of people they were saying during the dev stream that a lot of people were they, they would do the quest or they would go into uranus and <laughs> uranus they would go to uranus and as soon as you saw the uh the blue sentience, I totally, ex the oculus, that's what they were. Uh, when you saw them, they straight up didn't, you, people didn't know you had to scan them. So now it's, you just need to go in there and they'll, you, you just immediately unlock the quest. So I, I, I like that. Um, as soon as you're near them, or at least within, I, I think it's within visual. So that's really nice. Uh, the one thing I can't believe, every time I make a video, the Necromech, they're doing some acquisition changes to this now. So I think there's going to be a place where you can just get them and get the resources as a petty, uh, pity system. And then the Cetus Wisps, now I liked how they had this, where it when, once you got close enough, they started going, they started flying away. They should just ma make them not fly away, but make it so that you have to chase them a little bit. I think that would have been fine. Kind of cute. Uh, but, you know, they're not too slow. They're, they, they go at a walk's pace. So you can still get them, but like, they, they move away. And I thought that would be kind of cool. So now they just kind of stay put. Eh, I don't really care for it. But we're just going to continue on. And now, a word from our sponsor. Hello, my children. It is I space pulp and i'm here to tell you the good word about lotus lotus is the mother of all tenno such is myself i am the leader of tennoism and i am here to tell you your eternal warframes will be saved by the lotus fret not for the Lotus will deliver us from the evil that is Balas. Also, we need donations. Come to Lua and worship with us. See you then. Yay, yeah, space space pump. Pump. And now, back to the news. Okay, so the next thing I do want to go over as well is enemy and Adla highlighting systems. Uh... I think this is nice to have, especially for people who have uh, who are colorblind. Uh, this is, or you go into a really dark room, which means more than likely they're going to have somewhere at some time you're going to be ex in extreme darkness. This is kind of nice to have that uh, enemy and ally highlighted, especially when you're in the middle of a long form mission and when your allies goes down and you cannot see them i'm hoping this also goes for defense targets that are on the move 
I think that would help tremendously. Conservation improvements. Uh, and right now, currently, they do have some changes, but they are going to make it so that you can teleport to the particular one that you really want to do. So I think that is beautiful. Auto melee, thank the Lord, thank the gods. Uh, this one I am actually excited for because all I have to do is hold a button now. Now, DE, I love this. Can we make this a thing where I do that for, I don't know, maybe for bullet jumping? Just just a thing, just just my thing. Because I, I constantly bullet jumping, but I have this thing where I bullet jump and then roll and then... A, a, a bullet jump a, just a whole lot of whole lot of stuff to go a little bit faster uh, the next thing I do want to go over is the buffs and debuffs and pause menu this is nice but you, in the middle of a mission there's no, no real time to actually take a look at this so I guess on PC this would be fine because you have a cursor but on an Xbox and possibly PlayStation this is probably uh not as good. Don't get me wrong. I would love to see the buffs and debuffs that are on my Warframe as it as I do the things. It would be even better if in mid-mission I'm able to actually see all of my stats increase. Or if they actually had it so that while I'm in the middle of my arsenal, anything that applies a status or a buff or anything... I can actually see that on my Warframe. It would be very, very nice, and I can visually see what I'm going for. Uh, the next thing, uh, war the weapon traits display and upgrades. This is also very nice. A lot of weapons do particular things, and so having that trait in the weapon, either on the descript on the weapon itself, or in the upgrade portion of it, I think. It should be straight when you're in the arsenal or whenever you look at it, you see the weapon trait. But this is still really nice. Now, the uh, new update history screen, I think this will also be good. I don't know how many updates they're going to go before they start deleting some. But this would be nice. So if you stopped playing the game when Fortuna came out and then you saw, Oh, Abyss of Degath, the Degath. Uh, it's coming out. You know, I kind of want to know what's up. Uh, I thought that was really nice. Here, I'll even show you. So the history thing, I like this. And you can see everything here. Uh, you can even see some of the new items are even displayed right here. Which, again, uh, this is a free game, but you're able to see it from the get-go. They even uh, show you if you click on certain things. So like the see the full note uh, patch notes. Uh, you can get the descriptions by just putting your cursor right over it just like that look at it. you can see the description right then right there and all of that that is beautiful is it something needed probably not but i do like this oh my god i am almost <laughs> we're almost there it's slowly getting towards the end so what they are going to be doing for the focus lens is the con conversion buff that little yellow orb in the middle of the mission. So they're going to be increasing the amount of focus you get from those things. Because you do got to go through some stuff in order to get that. Uh, the one thing I thought was really cool about the shield gating and overshields. Or a shield overhaul. This is actually going to be very nice. Because. Okay so you can see right here that they actually put in the catalyzing shield. This is the essentially a mod for shield gating. Some of you might actually not like this because now it's a mod and not just a feature you just use for any and all of your uh, Warframes. So this will now take up a mod slot, which I think a lot of people might be mad about that. Someone who doesn't really use it like myself. This is going to be interesting, but this also does scale off of shields. So the more shields you have, the... Uh, longer the shield gating is actually going to go for. So I think that's actually really nice for them to add, make this a, f a feature. So one of the things they're also going to be doing is they're going to essentially uh, change the Warframe mods and instead of going off of rank 0 Warframe stats they're actually going to be leveling up with your Warframe. 
So as you can see uh, right here, this is the old stuff. So the health is 300. They're gonna, at net max, it's gonna be at 370. So it's gonna be a 23% increase. Um, but what they're gonna be doing at max mods is you can see it's just, gonna, it's gonna look a lot better. It's going, but it's going off of your max health at the max level. So, and then we'll even show you this right here. So you got the before, right now, it, Steel fiber is at 110 armor, and down here it's at 100. So they're trying to just make this a lot easier to go over. So 450 percent, uh, 450% for health, or 450, 440% 440 for just health. Down here, 100%. So I don't know exactly if this is going to really make a huge difference. They seem to think it's going to be. But this just makes it a lot easier on someone like me because I don't really... Uh, you could plug this stuff in and it'll be fine. But as you can see, uh, everything else is going to stay the same. But they're just going to go off of this right here, the bonus ranks. So if you're starting out with 300 and he eventually gets an, ad an additional 200, putting on a vitality would increase it by, as, this, as you can see down here, just 100, and it's still gonna get the same result. They just changed it. So I guess they're just being weird, you know, whatever. So they did actually make improvements to the break number missions. And if you don't know what the break number missions are, stop right here. This is spoiler alert zone. This is the missions that you're gonna be doing for call. The break number missions are the call missions, and they're just making it so that you can go a little bit faster, you're a little bit tankier, it's just, it just small improvements. They're also gonna let you change your weapons. Throughout the mission, there'll be some spots where uh, there's a down, there's a, there, there is a downed grenier, you're able to pick up his stuff and actually use the different missions, or use the different weapons, I'm sorry. I think this is actually a really nice change. Um, does spice this up a little bit. Uh, also, going over the Nightwave changes, they're just going to make it so it's less grindy. But they are going to add some additional ones, which I thought would be really nice. Uh, the Steel Path Circuit Riven rewards. So if you have gotten all of the Incarnans and you still want to do the circuit, it, every five tiers that you go up you can actually get a riven instead which i think is actually a lot better for that for people who just want to get a boatload of ribbons and resources so that's actually kind of nice i like that and then the incarnate evolution swap this one is going to be a uh the once you unlock the entire incarnate form you'll be able to actually change it in your arsenal without having to go back to Cal calavero and doing it there now when you do level it up so once you break one of the uh, challenges you won't have to go to him okay so to explain the reason as to uh, what this is so if you say got the lado and you just got the lado incarnate you slap it on the the lado weapon and you do the first challenge what you're then going to be doing is once you finish that challenge, you do have to go back to Cal Calavero. But the nice thing is after that, you can just do all that right in your arsenal. So I think that's a very nice uh, addition to that. Okay, so the next thing is, yes, Grendel Prime is coming out. And I'm going to let you guys look, but look at this. I, I don't know if this is, an, uh, he looks like an elephant or what they really went for Grendel, but I like this. I like how this looks. Uh, the Xylock Prime, uh, hold on, we're going to pause. Ah, I can't think it. All right, so for all you people who actually did not use your Xylock uh, Incarnate right away and you're saving it for Grendel, as you can see, here are actually the stats just for this one. So the crit chance is horrible. Look at that, 12. But, oh, puncture is actually the lowest one out of all those. If it was a very high puncture one, I could definitely see why crit chance 
is as low as it is. But it is an incarnate one, so with with a status of 36% and a 2.4 crit chance multiplier. Or crit multiplier, not in the crit chance, sorry. Uh, this is actually really nice, and a 1.2 uh, reload. That's actually this is really good. I, I, I'm actually definitely gonna want to get this as is. Uh, so that is the prime variant of the Zylocke, and you even got the melee, which I'm not going to. I'm not, definitely not gonna say that one, but I mean it's a it's a meat grinder. Uh, looking at the uh, things for it, it's actually not too bad uh, speed wise. Range is really good. Crit chance, 26%, 2.2 multiplier, and 36 status. Uh, but it's high, it, It's really high in impact. Still, though, this is actually a very good melee weapon. Oh, look, it even comes with its own thing. Grendel is immune to crowd control when he performs heavy attacks with this weapon. Okay, so this might be a heavy attack possible weapon. Um, looking at this though, the wind up 1.1. So I don't know if this might be a good uh, thing for a heavy attack. Uh, the status though is not in slash, which is interesting. But uh, for a weapon, we shall see about this. Uh, I think this is actually not bad for a decent weapon. It's definitely still path worthy because you have. Anything over 20% is good, so that plus that, so this is really good. So the last thing I want to talk about is probably the thing everyone has been harping on about, and yes, I am as well. Cross save is definitely going to be coming towards the end of this year. Now if you're saying, V, cross save, oh my god, I get to change all my stuff over, hold up, hold up, hold up. I say cross save is coming but they're going to be making cross-save uh, clans for right now. So I'm able to invite people from all over PC, Xbox, PlayStation, mobile when it comes out. You'll be able to actually invite those people to your clan. So it's not exactly what we're looking for right now. And I know they're definitely trying to make sure that... Uh, bit by bit is exactly what we what we want and how we want it. Uh, now I, I'm telling you that I want them to take their time on this one. Why? Because I was one of the people who really loved playing Outriders, and they screwed the pooch on this one. How they screwed the pooch? It was very simple. Sometimes when you logged in after doing a mission, your entire account was wiped. So when they strolled the cross play the cross yeah the cross play for outriders that actually killed the game this they really need to make sure they do a very good job on because this will kill the game so if they can do this i would absolutely say it's a, a feather in their cap and i will definitely root them on last but not least they did go over uh soul frame stuff uh Honestly, I like how they're trying to plug this game, and I'm surprised they didn't uh, put their other game into here as well. But Soul Frame, they're actually going to be doing a uh, alpha, beta, whatever they want to call it. Uh, I do want to be one of those peoples. I'm going to see if I can try to do that. I think I was able to when they announced it. So I will definitely look into that, and if I do, you will definitely be seeing that on my channel. Anyways, the last thing I do want to go over is if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you want to go very in-depth with the actual dev stream, I highly suggest going onto YouTube and actually looking and watching the dev stream. If not, definitely go on their website. I will actually post a link down below here that you you can actually go and they segment each and every one of them. So you can go and actually hear for yourself. This is just a rundown recap and... Honestly, my words. I want to thank you all for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you next time in the Villainous News. Stay villainous, my friends. <laughs>